Hello everyone and welcome to episode 19 of our Raspberry Pi series and in today's episode we're going to be installing Watchtower on a Raspberry Pi. So Watchtower is a application that can be installed onto your Raspberry Pi via a Docker container. It can monitor all your other containers that you have installed and if it notices that there's any image updates for these containers it will automatically either monitor it and alert you via email or you can actually set it to automatically update them containers. So we're going to be installing Watchtower today in monitor mode. We don't want it to automatically um, update our um, images. That would be probably a bad idea in a live environment. Um, you, you'd want to just be notified and then what you can do is manually come in and update the container as and when you need to. Um, doing so you can then check manually to make sure that your containers are running correctly and that all the um, the mounts have been set correctly and that everything is working right. But if you wanted to, you can set this up to automatically update your containers. You can set up Watchdog to periodically check for container updates. And if it notices that there is an update, what it will do is then pull the image down. It will gracefully shut down the container and then it will install the new image and then it will repurpose the container, re um, restore the mounts and it will basically reboot it up. So then you you know you wouldn't even notice that it's been updated. So as part of your maintenance, um, Watchtower can be a very useful application, and I recommend using it. So I'm looking forward to this today. If you guys are ready, we're going to get straight on and we're going to install Watchtower on our Raspberry Pi. So we're just going to start off today by having a look at the container we are going to be using today. Now this is on um, GitHub. So we're just going to scroll down here and have a look. Now if you just wanted to install Watchtower and you didn't want to set up any configurations, you didn't want to set up notifications and you just wanted a basic Docker install and all your um, images to be updated automatically, what you can do is they actually give you a nice little command to run in your terminal and what you can do, if you run this command, this will install that Docker container for you and it will update all your containers as and when it does. But we want to have a little bit more control over um, how this process works. We want to be notified of when these updates happen. There's also a limitation on how many times you can pull an image from certain places like Docker Hub. We don't want to keep pulling down images all the time. We want to have a, a limit on that. So I would say, you know, once a week is sufficient enough to go and check for these updates to happen. So with our setup, we're going to do that on a Friday and at 4 a.m. in the morning to... Um, you know, so it's, it's not nothing else is happening on our Raspberry Pi. It's sort of in a quiet hour and it will check. And then when obviously when you wake up on Saturday morning, you can see that in your Gmail account, it will tell you all your containers that you need to update. So, yeah, so it does give you a nice, nice command to run. If you guys want to use that, then why not? But I'll explain to you as we go along why we might want to put a little bit more control over this and have a little bit more of a, you know, a bit more of a fine tune to the configuration. So we're just going to take a look at the stack container that we're going to be using today. I've got this in a text file and it starts from here up to here. So if you guys want to use this stack, there is a link in the resources section below to our um, dedicated blog page for today. And in there, you will find that the Docker Compose stack that you can use for setting up Watchtower. So we're going to start at the very top and work our way down. And as you can see here, this area above here doesn't need to be changed. It just basically says the container we're going to be using and gives the container a name. Um, you don't want to mess with the volume where you want this to be stored. So just leave that exactly the way it is. Um, so we're going to move down. So we're looking at the time zone now. We are in Europe, London. You guys can find the exact format to use by coming into your Open Media Vault, clicking on date and time. And you can find it under time zone. Okay, And you need to match this time zone you can just copy and paste that into the time zone area here. So the next thing we're going to look at is, is where it says Watchtower Monitor Only. Okay, we're setting this to true because we don't want this to automatically update our containers for the reasons I explained earlier. Um, so we're going to set that to true. So that's going to basically, if it notices anything's been updated, it's going to let you know via the email settings that we set up down here. So the cleanup is true, so that's going to get rid of any um, old images, things like that. Um, you know, it'll remove that automatically for you, which is good and helpful. Saves a bit of storage space. So this section here will check for when Watchtower schedules and when it checks for any image updates. Now, if it finds any image updates, it will pull the image. Um, so you want to make sure that this isn't doing it too frequently. Okay, even with it set to monitor only, it will still pull down them images. So the Watchtower notifications we are setting to email. This is just to let it know that we are going to put some email settings in below. Um, the from email means we're going to put down the account that we're going to be used, which will be our Gmail account. And then the to email, this is where we want our email to go to. So basically what we're doing is we're going to be using the SMTP settings of Gmail. And then from here downwards, okay, we're going to have this settings. So the SMTP settings. Now I've looked online here and I found an article from 
um, DigitalOcean, and this explains how to set up the Gmail. So I'm just going to do this along with you today. I haven't actually done this before, so let's see how this works out. So yeah, we're going to follow this guide, and we're going to set up our SMTP settings by using this DigitalOcean post. So working our way down. So wherever you set your email to go to, this will be in the subject tag. It will say Watchtower Alert Container Updates. Uh, moving down, the server user, we're going to put in our Gmail username in here. And then the SMTP port that Gmail sets is 587. Okay, so if you guys are ready, we're going to go through and set up our SMTP settings with Gmail. So in this from field, you want to put in your Gmail address. And then the to email, you want to put this into another email address that you use. Okay, so I'm going to put mine into another account that I have. I mean, this is just for testing. You can fine tune this as much as you want. Um, so the SMTP email. So this is the email server. So we're going to come into here and grab the email server, which is smtp.gmail.com. And we're going to look here at the server password. So stick in your password. So if you guys are using special characters in your password, which you should be for a decent password. So let's say your password was like this and it had stars and ats and special characters. Now, the thing with Portainer when you're using stacks is it, it has trouble reading them. Okay, Put, wrapping them in quotations, things like that possibly could help. But I think what you should do, if you guys have got a complex password in any shape or form, just leave it as password for now. And what we'll do is we'll come back in after to the container and then we'll change that password and then we'll reissue that container with the correct password. So the server user will be your um, Gmail address. Just gonna copy and paste that from there. And we're gonna leave the port number the exact same as it is. So now we've set up all them fields, I'm just gonna check through to make sure everything is okay. Okay, I just noticed here that that's not right, so I'm going to change that. This will be, that would already be changed in the one that you download, so don't worry about changing that. So make sure that everything is the same as what we see here. And we're going to copy now and paste that into memory. And we're going to come into our Portainer installation. And we're going to come down on the left hand side and click on Stacks. Then we're going to add a stack and we're going to call it Watchtower. And then we're going to paste that into there and make sure that everything looks okay. Okay, everything looks okay to me. So we're going to come down here and we're going to click on deploy the stack. This will take a few moments for it to pull down that image. And then once it pulled down the image, we're going to come in and click on containers. And we're going to find our watchtower and we're going to click on the logs. Now, if you watch in here, it says here that we have um, bad credentials. Now, that's because we set password. So that's incorrect. So what we're going to do is we're going to come back into the containers now and we're going to come down to where it says Watchtower and we're just going to click on that little um, tick box here and we're going to click on Stop. And then we're going to come down into Watchtower here and we're going to click on Watchtower and we're going to click on Duplicate and Edit and then we're going to scroll down to where it says um, Environmental, so here, so where it says ENV, which is, stands for Environmental Values. And we're going to scroll down the page here to where we see it says password, which is here. Now, what you need to do now is replace this now with your password. Okay, so now you've done that. What we're going to do is we're going to click on deploy the container. So this will now replace our container that we had and it should put in the new password. Okay, so that's now finished. We're now going to come back over to where we see Watchtower here and we're going to click on the logs. So I'm still getting some credential problems there, even though the password's set up right and the usernames. So everything seems to be okay. So I think what we need to do, come into our Gmail account. And we're going to sign in. Then we're going to click Next. And then we're going to put our password in. Click Next. And then we're going to come down to where it says Gmail. Here we go. So as you can see, that's come through. That has been blocked. Okay, so we need to go to check activity. 
So what we're going to cl click on is click, yes, it was me. And then it says, less secure app blocked. Google blocked the app you were trying to use because it doesn't meet our security standards. Some apps and devices use less secure sign-in technology, which makes your account more vulnerable. You can turn off access of these apps, which we recommend, or turn on access if you want to use them despite the risks. Google will automatically turn the setting off if it's not being used, okay? So we're going to fix this now. There is a link in the resources section below that you can copy and paste straight into here that will allow you to change this setting. So once you paste that in, and you, it will take you to the less secure app access, and then all you've got to do is click on allow less secure apps off, okay? So allow less secure apps is now on. So now when you come back to your portainer, we restart our watchtower. Now if we come down into the logs now of watchtower, we will see that the first run has happened and it is working correctly. So what will happen now? So periodically Watchtower will check for container updates and it will notify you when they become available. So just remember you don't have to use Gmail at all with this. If you didn't want to um, allow an insecure app to access your Gmail account, that's absolutely fine. You can use any SMTP server that you have access to. So if you guys use cPanel or anything like that, if you have a control panel like a website or anything like that, you can set up an email account and you can use the SMTP settings from that account and you can do it exactly the same way we've just done it here. And you won't have that problem with having to allow insecure apps to your Gmail account. So, you know, it's completely optional and it's up to you. You guys can even use other SMTP services. It doesn't have to be Gmail. So what we're going to do now is we're going to have a look in our Outlook account. And we're going to see that email that's come through. And as you can see now in our Outlook account, we have a notification that's come through from our watchtower. So it's just going to let you know that this is working correctly, that it's using SMTP. It's come through from our Gmail account and it's just letting you know that the, um, the next check will be performed in that amount of time. So in our next episode, I'm going to show you some general maintenance and housekeeping, how to update your containers, how to update Open Media Vault, how to do all your software updates, how to clean up all your old images, and how to just really tidy up our install and make sure that everything is running and everything is security patched and everything is up to date. So that is what's coming up in our next episode. I hope you guys are looking forward to that because I certainly am. So this brings us to the end of today's episode. If you guys got benefit out of it, you can hit that like and subscribe button as well as the notification bell you'll be notified of any of our new uploads in the description below we have all the resources for today's episode we also have a dedicated blog post which will go through everything that we've done today in today's video we have sourced all the best parts that are compatible with our Raspberry Pi series if you look in the description below you will see Amazon affiliate links in there if you guys use any of them links we get a little bit of commission back it's at no extra cost to you and we thank every single one of you who use our links so all that's left for me to say now is thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one